This question comes from Oxford University's maths admissions test. This comes from the 2013 paper, and this has five parts. And I quite like this question because I remember when I was doing this preparing for my Oxford exam, and the way that I did this problem then is very different to how I would do this now. Obviously, now that I know a lot more maths. Let's have a look at it. It's got quite a few parts, so I'm just going to tackle each part as they come. So we've got k between 0 and 2, and we've got a sketch of the graph y equals fkx, where fk of x equals x times x minus k times x minus 2. We've got ak denoting the area of the shaded region, so this area here. Part 1, without evaluating them, write down an expression for ak in terms of two integrals. Okay, this is pretty straightforward. AK is just going to be this area, which is just some integrals added up, but we've got to be careful with this second part because, of course, that goes below the x-axis, so its integral would be negative, but the area is still positive, so we need to turn that negative into a positive, multiply it by minus 1. So it's the integral from 0 to k of fkx dx, uh, plus the negative, or in other words, minus the integral from k to 2 of fkx dx, like so. Part 2. We want to explain why a of k is a polynomial in k of degree 4 or less. You are not required to calculate a k explicitly. Okay, so one thing you could do is calculate a k explicitly, but that we're told we don't have to do, um, so it's probably easier to not. How do we prove it's a polynomial of degree 4 or less? Well, let's look at our answer from the previous part, a very common math strategy. Let's look at this. Well, we're integrating a cubic function. And so when you integrate a cubic, the polynomial, or when you integrate a cubic, you get a polynomial of degree 4, a quartic. So this thing here has degree 4. Same thing for this thing here. It's going to have degree 4 in terms of k. And when you subtract two quartic equations, most likely it will still be a quartic, but there's a, there is the chance that the, the powers of k, the k to the 4, cancel out and you get left with a cubic or a quadratic or something. Um, but it's certainly going to be at least, oh, sorry, at most a quartic. So yeah, that kind of explains why. Let's look at part three. Uh, we want to verify that fk of 1 plus t equals minus f2 minus k of 1 minus t for all t. Um, when a question says verify, that basically just means, you know, plug it in, show that, work out what the left-hand side is, work out what the right-hand side is, and show that they're equal. There's a couple of ways you can do this, some more efficient than others. What you could do is expand out fkx and then sub in 1 plus t and get uh, monstrous lots of expanding and simplifying and collecting like terms. You don't want to do that. In fact, here you can do it quite nicely, just keeping it factored. So if I do fk of 1 plus t, just according to this definition up here, it's 1 plus t, 1 plus t minus k, and then 1 plus t minus 2. And if I simplify that as t plus 1, t plus 1 minus k, and then t minus 1, like so. And what about f2 minus k of 1 minus t? So this is going to be uh, 1 minus t times 1 minus t minus k, which in this case is 2 minus k, and then 1 minus t minus 2. So if I simplify that, that's 1 minus t. Um, 1 minus 2 is negative 1 plus k, so I've got k minus 1 minus t, and then here I've got um, minus 1 minus t. And now if I just factor out a minus 1 from each of these brackets, that gives me minus 1 cubed at the front, which is just minus 1. And then I've got t minus 1, t uh, minus k plus 1, um, and then t plus 1, like so. And that is the same as that. And so therefore, f2 minus k of 1 minus t is the negative of fk of 1 plus t. Great. Okay, cool. Um, part, or the, the remaining part of part 4, deduce that ak equals a of 2 minus k. Um, so, oh no, sorry, I misread that. Sorry, the start of part four. How can the graph of y equals fkx be transformed to the graph of y equals f2 minus kx? Now this, we're going to use part three to help us. Um, and if you've not seen this trick before, this might seem pretty remarkable. But let me just write down the answer for part four. It's a reflection in x equals one and x-axis in some order. It doesn't really matter. You can either reflect it in the x-axis first, then reflect in the line x equals 1, or do it the other way around. How do I know that? Well, let's ignore this minus sign, because this minus sign here just means the reflection in the x-axis. So let's ignore that for the time being. Now we're going from one function to a different function, and with this first function on the left-hand side, when you substitute in 1 plus t, this, the function on the right-hand side gives you the same output when you substitute in 1 minus t. So if I sketch this here, if I put 1 on there, this function on the left, when I substitute in 1 plus t, 
So this, this thing here, sorry, is going to be 1 plus t. And then this corresponding number on that side will be 1 minus t. I'm saying that the, uh, the function on the left, which I'll use crosses to resemble, gives me the same output as the function on the right, which I'll use a dot to resemble. And the same is true regardless of what t is. So if I choose that point there, I'll get a point here. So if this was like 1 plus t2, this would be 1 minus t2. If I squeeze it on there. And you can see that this is going to form a reflective picture around this uh, line x equals 1. So whatever this graph looks like, this will look like the kind of reflection of. Um, and so therefore, this is just a reflection in the line x equals 1. And then the minus sign, which I've now scribbled out, gives you the reflection in the x-axis as well. So do pause the video to really digest that. Maybe whip out pen and paper and convince yourself that that's true, because that's really important and a really useful fact to be able to recognize uh, on site for future problems. Um, and so the remaining part of part four says, deduce that a k equals a of 2 minus k. Well, why is this true? Well, let me just replace k here with 1 plus t. And if you do that, you get a of 1 plus t. Um, oh, sorry, no. We were firstly wanted to deduce this. I can't use this yet. So why is a k equal to a 2 minus k? Well, basically, we've shown that f k and f 2 minus k, they are just to get from one to the other, you just have to reflect twice. And obviously, reflections don't impact any areas. And so therefore, um, these two areas will be the same. Um, so that's why we get a k equals a 2 minus k. OK, let's move on to the final part. So for the final part of this problem, we want to explain why there are constants a, b, and c such that a, k equals a times k minus 1 to the 4 plus b times k minus 1 squared plus c. You are not required to calculate a, b, and c explicitly. Now, I remember when I did this problem in my preparation, I was stumped on this part. And so I think I must have been doing this under time conditions. And I thought, OK, I want to at least get some marks here. I'm just going to try and work out a, b, and c explicitly because I knew I could from part one because we'd written a k as, you know, as a sum of two integrals, or one integral minus another. And we know what uh, a k is, it's, or f k x is, is that. So we can integrate those, sub it in, and then try and write a k in this weird form here, and just explicitly work out what a, b, and c are. However, that took me probably over 10 minutes to do. And for the amount of marks that this part probably was, which is maybe two, two or three, not really worth it. So how else can we approach this? part of the problem? Well, we want to use the previous part, and in particular, this deduction we've just made here. a k equals a of 2 minus k. And the thing I want us to spot is if you substitute k is 1 plus t into this, you get this. But 2 minus 1 plus t is just 1 minus t. So we get the a of 1 plus t equals a of 1 minus t. And we've seen this before. This means that the graph of the graph of y equals a of x has a line of symmetry x equals 1 for the same reasons as before. So it has a line of symmetry at x equals 1. Why is this useful? Well, we'll use this in just a moment. But we know that a of x, I should use a of k, but I'm going to use a of x here, is a polynomial of degree at most 4. So that normally means we can write this as something times x to the 4 plus something times x cubed plus something times x squared and so on. But actually, I'm going to write it like this. Uh, a times x minus 1 to the 4 plus b times x minus 1 cubed plus c times x minus 1 squared plus d times x minus 1 plus e. Like so. So this is still true. That it's still a quarter. It's a bit of a weird way to write it, but it's going to be useful because we're going to exploit this fact that it has a line of symmetry when x is 1. And um, this is true. Um, and you can just think of this as a translation of an ordinary quartic. Now, what we want to do is show that this term and this term are 0. So b and d are 0. How are we going to do this? Well, we're going to use this fact that when I, for this is thing here is true for all values of t. So if I substitute 1 plus t into this, I'm going to get a t to the 4 plus bt cubed, plus ct squared, plus dt, plus e. And now if I substitute 1 minus t into this, I'm going to get at to the 4 minus bt cubed, plus ct squared, minus dt, plus e. And now if I set these two things equal to each other, those guys cancel out, those guys cancel out, those guys cancel out. And bringing everything to one side, I get two lots of bt cubed, plus dt, a uh, 2dt equals 0. And again, this is true for all values of t. And since it's true for all values of t, the only way this is possible is if b and d are both 0. 
And if they are zero, these two terms vanish and you're left with something of this form. That's a much more slick way of proving this, um, using the symmetry of this a function around x equals 1. Really not obvious, and this is a really tricky problem. And now that I've explained it, it might see, oh, you know, I've solved it in what, whatever, 8, 10 minutes, whatever it is. Um, but actually, to come up with these methods under time pressure can be very difficult. So if you are struggling with these sorts of things, practice is probably the best thing I can say, but also just exposing yourself to lots of different types of problems and techniques. So with one map problem, there can be multiple techniques. So this final part here, you may have satisfied yourself by just work, doing what I did when I was preparing for this and evaluating AK. Um, but actually, there's a much, much more efficient solution, which you should want to master before you do the actual exam. Um, and if you know loads of these techniques and tricks, you'll be in a very good place. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.